Well, so I, I, I think one of the things that first and foremost in my kind of philosophy about that is, is more trying to think about the quality of evidence. Um, as you look at broadly speaking at education, a lot of education's you know, research historically has been based on kind of apples to oranges comparisons. Compare students who take one thing versus comparisons with students who take another. And the problem, of course, in that is oftentimes there's a very good reason why they take different courses. Um, you know, I, I went to a very different college than uh, my siblings went to, and part of that was we had very different interests. And uh, so just comparing our outcomes uh, confounds that we had different interests. And in the case of online schooling, this is one of the cases where we've been studying at Stanford, we're highly interested in this because the types of students who take online courses are different than the students who take the kind of traditional brick and mortar. And a lot of the kind of hyperbola that's been out there so far is based on kind of comparisons of these two students or types of students without much thought about saying, how can we really get to comparing apples to apples and making a comparison which really might reveal that if I take this online course versus some other medium, how much better I do as a result. Sure. Well, I think it's less about which data and it's more about thinking about the types of variation you use. And the, the idea here is if I just make a simple comparison, I might be in trouble. But if I can make a more controlled comparison, I might be in good shape. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is kind of look for sometimes what we call natural experiments, where the case where a student takes a course because they happen to, it happens to be offered, uh, it's not offered at their local campus. Uh, so we might be able to compare two students who look identical. One of them happens to be live near a campus where the course was offered the last quarter. The other one is not going to be offered until next quarter. And, uh, but yet to stay on track, they have to take it in the sequence. Um, the second thing is to try to think proactively about how could I design type of an A-B experiment where one student receives one thing, one student receives another, and then we can somehow compare the actual outcomes of those students. And so those aren't necessarily about the data, they're more about trying to plan ex ante about how to introduce students to two different learning environments in a way in which is very consistent or builds upon what they're already doing. Sure, so I mean, there's two ways to think about the impact. One is to think about the impact on average and what we're actually finding is kind of lower uh, outcomes. But the other is to think more about the distribution. And it's not just that you see lower outcomes, it's that you see kind of a higher variance with respect to students. Meaning that a, a good student still does pretty well on an online course. A, bad, uh, a mediocre to bad student is actually gonna do somewhat worse in an online forum. And so as a result, it's a shift down, but it's also kind of a broadening of the range of outcomes that you might expect. Um, and uh, by contrast, oftentimes we try to think about what's the kind of professor's value added. And what we see is something that it doesn't seem to suggest that the professor's value added is getting wider. If anything, it's staying the same or even getting smaller in that part of our cost savings in an online setting is we try to take the professor a little bit outside of the classroom and the professor winds up following a script more, having less interaction with students and so forth. And so the very thing that in K through 12 we think is the key to, to, the, you know, to the extent that schools can influence students, uh, teachers are right there at the head. And in online education, we kind of pull them out of the equation. Well, I mean, the number one thing is trying to think about, one, which students we encourage to take online courses. A student who lacks motivational skills is probably not going to follow through with the things. The other is to try to think about within the course itself, how do we create incentives for students to stay up on their work, for them to continually do the work, and in the case that they fall behind, so that they don't just immediately fall apart and leave the course, but that we can help get them back on track with their peers. And so if you can construct courses that have some embedded incentives in it, you can do that type of thing, at least the second part of it.